Welcome back. Today is a rainy winter day and I had an idea. I see all these cool 3D printed time lapses online. And I've got some camera equipment so this should be a no-brainer, right? Well, I've tried that before and quite frankly it can be a little motion sickness inducing. Which is where Octoprint would come in. So after installing it to 150% on my crystal clear LG G6 I built, I tossed Rupert the Reindeer onto an SD card and hit print using the powerful Octolapse plugin. And this looked pretty bad. Bad enough I almost wouldn't share it. Octoprint isn't making use of the image processing the LG G6 is capable of, and as a result this looks like it was shot with a flip phone. There had to be some way I could fire my DSLR trigger at just the right time, but there was no way to get my camera to communicate with Octolapse on Android. This meant I had to trigger it manually somehow, and to do that I needed to find out how this trigger even worked. It's a very simple electrical principle that doesn't even require additional batteries. Three long conductive strips of metal are spaced apart. When two are connected, it triggers the autofocus to engage, and when all three are connected, it completes the circuit and releases the shutter to take a picture. Super cool, but now I needed a way to make my printer push these strips together. I want to attach an external button, but still have a usable remote if I want to remove it someday. I'll tin some wires to extend the connections out of the body where I can then attach a button. Each of these metal strips has a corresponding wire soldered to it. This is the perfect spot to jump off. I'll use a handheld grinding tool to cut some round holes in the side of the remote shell. This way I can still close the housing while the wires will still extend outward. Now I'll do some testing to determine which combination of wires needs to be connected in order to complete the circuit. Wondering if all three needed to be connected, or if just the third and one other was required. Turns out, it's all three. But two can be connected at all times, meaning only the third will be necessary to trigger the camera. What better button to use than one that I already have from my printer? Since upgrading to a bed probe, I haven't had a need for the original Z-axis stop switch but I always liked how clicky it sounded. I only needed two of the connections on the switch to complete the circuit, so I attached two wires to one, and the third to the other. Sure enough, I just created a second switch for this remote trigger. It works like a charm. The next step was actually attaching this to the printer, so I opened up Fusion 360 and started drawing possible mounts for the switch. It has two screw holes to mount it on a plate, and I needed a third for the larger M4 and T-nut that would go through and hold it in place inside the gantry bar. Some designs worked, some did not. Some shorted the switch. But after much trial and error, I finally got a switch that could be screwed in, and pressed reliably when the hot end moved to the far end of the X-axis. Excitedly, I threw Rupert back into the slicer, cut him into layers, uploaded him to Octoprint for Android, instructed it to move to the far right when taking a snapshot, and hit print. I was blown away by the results. Everything was smooth, consistent, and of the highest quality I could muster. But it wasn't all good yet. I hadn't accounted for the size of the plate my switch sat on, and it had been slowly grinding off the shielding for the hot end wiring, exposing metal and posing a risk. It was at this point that I realized how drastically far I was over-engineering this design. I didn't need screws. I didn't need T-nuts to attach it at all. All I needed was some good old reliable double-sided tape. Sure enough, my switch has never been stronger and has been working with amazing results. Thanks a bunch for watching. If you made it this far, I'd really recommend subscribing. Come check out some of the weirder stuff I do over on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you in the next one.